Hi everyone, my name is Jenny Alice and today I'm going to bring you along on a behind the scenes with Missy on a location shoot. So as a filmmaker, you'll shoot in a variety of different conditions. You'll have the perfect shot with your perfect shutter, ISO, frame rate, etc. But the image is just too blown out. So you have to play around with your settings, dial them down, and sometimes it will completely change your image, which isn't always ideal. So this is where ND filters come in. And maybe you watching this have got your own set of ND filters. However, sometimes when you're filming, say if you're filming on a cloudy day, you'll find that you'll be taking your ND filters on and off throughout the shoot. And sometimes it's just really time consuming and not ideal. Now, if you do have a lot of ND filters as well, it can be an absolute pain trying to swap and change them. And sometimes this is when accidents happen. <laughs> I also find when you're using a cheaper ND filter, sometimes you'll find that the image will start to change color once you add the ND filter. And that's normally a sign that they're not very good quality. And also when you're filming and you need to change the ND filters, it's not very natural when you're filming someone and you take the ND filter out and put another ND filter in. You'll find yourself that you have to stop recording and then start again. And it's just a massive hassle, something which I like to avoid. So for me, this is why I love using the variable ND. It's kind of the equivalent of having all your ND filters that you're swapping and changing, but in one ND filter. Personally, for me, whenever I'm filming, if I can find something that's going to save me time and just make my life easier, it's a win-win for me. And that's why I love using my Nissi variable ND filter. Now, not only is it precise and easy to change the amount of NDs I'm using from one stop to five, but it's also true to color and there's no change in contrast when filming. The footage that I'm showing you here is literally straight out of camera in cine tone. And as you can see, it doesn't play with any of the hues in the image. The contrast looks the same and I'm really happy with how that looks. So the Nissi variable ND filter that I use has one to five stops. So I can have a nice open wide lens and if there's too much light coming in, all I have to do is just push it up on the side very gently to make that smooth transition to kind of stop as much light coming into the camera and just make sure that my footage is nicely exposed. I also wanted to show you how it would look without an ND filter on it and how easy it is just to stop up and just correctly expose my footage without having to obviously go into a bag full of NDs and swap and change until the footage looks okay. So here's an example of our first setup where I had a really nice bokeh and I didn't want to lose the bokeh in the background because I felt like the background was a little bit distracting, but I also wanted it to look a nice and cinematic. And I, I am a sucker for bokeh and I like it. However, when you're filming outside and you want to open up your lens wide, you'll find that a lot of light will flood in and you're probably going to get greeted with a nice white screen, which basically means your footage is completely blown out. So in order to get rid of this, say if I didn't have an ND filter, I could change the aperture. So I could have the aperture at say 16 so that you can see all the background and you can see the model and it's nicely exposed. However, when you compare the shots side by side, I feel like having a bit of bokeh just adds a little something to the shot. So instead of having to change my aperture and keeping the lovely bokeh that I do love, all I had to do was add on my Nissi variable ND filter move it up to five stops and bish bash bosh. There we go, it's all in nice, nicely exposed and I have my bokeh. I also wanna mention how much time this saves. When we went away to do this shoot, it would have taken so much longer if I was changing my ND filters every single time, working out which one has the right strength for which time the sun has came out the clouds. And for me, just having the variable ND filter on and just being able to adjust it really quickly, nice and smoothly. And it was just so much more enjoyable and I didn't have to lug loads of stuff around with me. I didn't even have to change anything on my lens. I just kept it all the same the whole way through the shoot. And especially like today when we were running and gunning, simplicity is key. So things like this really do save a lot of time. So one of the things I love about the variable ND filter is when the model was in the shade, I had the ND filter quite low. As the model walked out of the shade, I was able just to move up the variable ND a few stops just to match the new levels of exposure from the sun. And as you can see, it's super smooth. There's no kind of hard stops going on. And this is a great thing as well if you're running and gunning again, because you don't have to worry about jumping in and out of shadows. 
And for this location shoot, it did test us because it was a partially cloudy day. So the sun was coming out, it was going. So we did put these ND filters through the paces. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope that you found this video useful and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. Bye guys.